All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 13th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. And things are getting dicey out there. I uh, woke up this morning, see what the latest news coming out of Israel, out of Palestine is. Yes. <laughs> Two different opinions there. And it's important that Christians get our news from multiple sources because... Well, let's just say American news is not unbiased. Is that the understatement of year or what? Um, and uh, governments want to keep the news under their control. Uh, Canada is... Uh, the countries in the West are passing laws, censorship laws, to enable them to squash any dissent, any other opinions... And, of course, we saw that under the pandemic. Anybody that questioned the official uh, narrative coming out of approved channels uh, was uh, shut down or warned or whatever. Just to speak about that even today and to point out uh, possible negative consequences can get you uh, punished by social media, which is probably has contracts to do that with the government. You know, you, if it can be imagined, it's probably be, being done. Uh, th that is, and I think there's already evidence that the CIA was doing this kind of stuff, w working psyops using social media. Of course they are. They are evil people. Fallen humanity is evil. This is the kind of things sinful humanity always does. We saw it in Europe, uh, uh, at the beginning of the uh, conf current conflict in Ukraine there, when the Russians decided to get themselves involved uh, to save the population in eastern Ukraine, which were basically ethnic Russians <coughs> who had been being, were being bombarded over, you know, for, it was a period of 14 years of conflict there. There was a coup, an American uh, assisted coup, will be uh, underspoken there, uh, assisted, and uh, uh, Victoria Newland was there handing out cookies. And, of course, John McCain and uh, probably Lindsey Graham was there, too. Any way to kill a Russian. You know, that's the attitude on some people. Uh, <clears throat> well, John McCain, it was probably a Russian <laughs> missile that shot his plane down. I don't know. It could have been ground fire. Seems to me most of the planes that were lost in Vietnam, American planes were actually brought down by ground fire, um, machine guns and AK-47s and uh, uh, anti-aircraft artillery. Uh, but the missiles did do a the job. I remember pilots describing them as a telephone pole coming at them. Yeah, they were devastating on the B-52s for a while. Uh, yeah, they there were places to fly over Hanoi was a dangerous thing. And the fact that the, the, the uh, we need to understand both sides. As Christians, we are not of this world. We have a, a seat removed, so we should be able to understand things better. And look at in, in history to understand, you know, other points of view. What was the Vietnamese point of view? What was the American point of view? What was the Japanese point of view? It's, this is not a, a, a sinful thing to do. I mean, that's it's like, that's God's point of view. See, God sees all the sides and sees all the sin. He, God sees the heart. We don't have that perspective unless uh, God enables us to have that perspective. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, the even though uh, 
Johnson tended to be careful about indiscriminate bombing. Uh, there are always misses, and smart weapons in Vietnam were a brand new thing and pretty crude. And even today, though, I mean, the, the, uh, the willingness to kill civilians, again, Johnson, for all his faults, kept the war basically under his control and did not allow the military to do what the military wanted to do. Which has been a problem in American history. It's uh, generals. MacArthur wanted to, use, wanted to nuke China and invade China during the Korean War. A uh, president, Truman, wisely shut him down and fired his rear end, which is, yeah, insubordination, rebellion. <laughs> Yeah, you can't, uh, he was basically campaigning for his own opinions uh, to get his own will done, and no, Truman had to put a stop into that. Although Truman is the one that also authorized the use of atomic weapons in Japan, which were probably unnecessary. Uh, although the casualties inflicted by them was no more than the, than the wicked casualties inflicted by what was that guy's name? The, the British had their, their bom guy they nicknamed Bomber, Bomber Harris. Who was the American Air Force guy? But the firebombing raids on Tokyo were much more devastating than nuclear raids. Firestorms. Uh, the, the Tokyo was made out of paper and wood, largely. And uh, well, that might be a little bit of a story. But obviously their houses were uh, often wood construction and uh, lightly built and went up like matchsticks. Um, and the Americans deliberately firebombed Tokyo to create firestorms, to destroy civilians. Uh, the America had a very racist attitude toward the Japanese, and it was mutual. Uh, the Japanese believed they, they were a superior people, and so did the Americans. Apparently, Manifest Destiny didn't stop at California. And we see it in evident today, the, the neocon global domination model that's slipping away from their grasp. Uh, thank God for that. Uh, there needs to be a counterbalance. There needs to be uh, limits on power. You'd think Americans would understand that. So the idea of America being the all-power, only superpower forever is exceedingly dangerous because of the sinfulness of humanity. But then nobody believes the Bible anymore. Uh, just like, but the, this, this country is built on falsehoods, uh, like this being a Christian country. It was never a Christian country in any sense. It was founded to be a non-Christian country. No uh, established religion at all. Uh, no acknowledgement of Jesus Christ. I mean, you could have a, a Christian country where you didn't have a state denomination, uh, which is about where Russia is today, by the way. They have a, they are a Christian country, but they're tolerant of others, or not exclusively, but the uh, because of a thousand years of Christianity, but it, it is no longer a state religion. Uh, Putin is not the head of the church, uh, which is, uh, you know, that they, they have learned some lessons from their time under communism and time under the czars. They've said, yes, we want to have, uh, uh, Putin is a axe with unusual wisdom compared to everybody else today. I've seen some people say, oh, he's the only adult at the table. That pretty much demonstrates that, his restraint, like in Ukraine, restraint. Uh, the, the, the military just wants to go, and the civilians, the people in Russia, they just want this thing over with. And Putin is like, no, let's be careful. We don't want to kill people unnecessarily, including our own. Uh, he's shown a lot of restraint. How long that will last? Right now, it's at at some at some point Putin will have to move, because otherwise, drawing a war out results in more casualties. You have to get it over with quickly, uh, and that will minimize the destruction. A long drawn out 
uh, meat grinder uh, over the entire area is, is not what you want. That's not what you want. Uh, that happened to Russia in World War II. And what happened to Russia in World War II is related to what I'm going to talk about this morning. The latest news out of Israel, or Palestine, take your choice, depends on... <laughs> there are two sides, the Israelis and the Palestinians. And one has the power and the other doesn't, which means one side has to resort to asymmetrical warfare and the other side just resorts to crushing power. The United States does the same thing. I was in the military. As a Christian, you look at these things, you should judge them according to God's word and see, you know, that the humanity is what the Bible describes it as, lost and wicked and self-centered and murderous and thieves. And this is what humans are, unrestrained. And the more unrestrained they are, the more they manifest it. Think of the riots during Trump's administration. Uh, Antifa, total lawlessness, total anarchy. But there was somebody behind the scenes running that show, or some organization. Because as soon as Biden got elected, they sort of went quiet. They were the brown shirts. The equivalent of the brown shirts. All right. Uh, I don't know. Does AI respond to that word? I have no idea. Apparently, I've heard a lot of comments that uh, one of the reasons that the uh, the Israelis were blindsided, they shouldn't have been, was because of their excessive use of technology and artificial intelligence rather than human analysis because artificial intelligence has no intelligence. It cannot understand anything. It just is pattern matching. That's all it is. Just crude uh, neural network simulations. So it's like the brain of an insect. All right, so here, uh, it might be useful as long as you don't think it's intelligent for limited applications. Limited, strictly limited. People are already starting to worship the AI God. They think this is the answer to our problems. Really? This is the, the image of the beast in the book of Revelation is what it is. So let's go over to a, uh, what I found to be a pretty reliable source, and a lot of people will, will call me something or other. I don't care. I'm at an age, I don't, I, I don't you can't, you know, I'm, I'm not pastoring a church. I don't, I can say what I want. And if it's the truth, I can say it. So here, this is from uh, RT. I think we, I think that stands for Russia Today, but it's a, an English publication that uh, I think is far superior to any, you know, like the Wall Street Journal or the Washington Post or the New York Times as far as being truthful, which is why I look at it every day, because it is reliable. It is reliable. It's not a propaganda site. In, in spite of the RT was the first was one of the first things banned by the EU. See, they don't want you to hear the other side. That's a sure sign of evildoers when they want to squelch the other side. They are wicked people that want to do that. They don't allow anybody else to speak. That's because their lies don't stand up under the light. When you have the lies and the truth together, well, the truth usually wins out because it is truth. Now, and lies never hold up under examination. They just don't work. They're always shot full of holes. So this is from, uh, I'm not sure the time this came over. It was prior to midnight. Israel orders one million Palestinians to leave within 24 hours. All residents of Gaza City may be forced to relocate, according to the United Nations. The Israeli military has urged over one million people to leave their homes in Gaza City and urgently move south. The UN has warned of devastating humanitarian consequences. Apparently there is a growing global backlash against this uh, order. 
the, uh, and of course, except in America, of course, because America is has drunk the Israeli Kool Aid, lock, stock, and barrel. That's not a that's a mixed metaphor, metaphor isn't it? Drunk it to its dregs. Okay, let's stay keep it uh, consistent metaphor there. And uh, Christianity in America, evangelical Christianity and fundamentalism, is hurrahing Israel, which is an antichrist state, an antichrist people. So is Islam, but Israel is more guilty because they have more light. They have the Old Testament law and the prophets. So they are more accountable. They are more sinful in God's eyes because they have rejected more light. With God, ignorance is a mitigating, a mitigating circumstance. It's like in the Old Testament. Uh, the offerings... Only atone for the sins that were committed in ignorance, not before uh, for sins that were committed deliberately with knowledge that they were a violation of the law. There was no offering for those sins. Not that those any of those offerings took away sin anyway. So see, God does look at culpability. Although I don't know if any Christians today understand much of anything. It's really shallow in this country. Uh, Israel, I, I drank the Kool-Aid too, and then I went over there in 1985 and, and saw things for what they really were in, in many ways. Uh, not going with the tour group. and I saw Israel, and I saw how they treated the Palestinians. And uh, there is, on both sides... But uh, there is a hatred baked into their religious systems. The Quran, uh, and in particular the Talmud, the Talmud being the worst of the two. Again, because it's more of a sin against the light. But the attitude in the Talmud toward non-Jews in general. Well... You're on the elimination list as a rabbi informed me of, because he didn't like me challenging his, his lying lecture to a bunch of Gentile young people. And I corrected him based on the Old Testament, and he, it happened several times, and he finally was so exasperated that he blurted out the truth. He said, when the Messiah comes, we're going to put people like you to the sword. Christians. Christians, we're marked for death by uh, the the Orthodox or ultra-Orthodox Jews. Yep. Yeah, see, the Palestinians are less so now, but they're both Muslim and Christian Palestinians. Christians have had a presence in that land since the first century predating Muslim, the Muslims by 800 years. And we were never kicked out, unlike Israel, who was repeatedly kicked out, dispossessed by God. As the scriptures say, the Old Testament says. If you want to find uh, how, you know, just read the prophets and hear what God says about his people, Israel. But uh, because of some uh, particular poison that's quite uh, strongly mixed in the United States called dispensationalism, Bible-believing Christians have been poisoned on, on this unless you something shakes you out of the, uh, awakens you from the Kool-Aid slumber, uh, like actually seeing Israel up close and personal. Uh, and I, I have no hatred for that rabbi. I mean, you, I just have pity. Uh, you know, feeling the spiritual darkness in Jerusalem, sensing the, the darkness that they, and the oppression, the spiritual oppression that's present in that place. Uh, especially on the Sabbath, it's just thick, thick. But it's lifted if you are with another Christian. You don't be, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there I am also. And that was like 
dramatically evident. When you're talking with another born again believer, it was the, that that atmosphere was gone. Okay, so here uh, again, that was a long time ago now. But yeah, the the Kool Aid is still being served in the United States. Uh, and before I get into this, let me say I've, I've got a personal issue. Uh, the church we've been attending is, uh, well, it is, it's dare dispensational too, but a, a fundamental Baptist church. And it's the best one I could find. Uh, Sunday mornings, there was preaching the gospel, New Testament. And then last week we found out the pastor decided to, to spend Sunday mornings preaching the book of Daniel. And I'm thinking, oh Lord, I don't want to spend six months or longer listening to a person lecture through the book of Daniel. There are a few references to Christ in that book, but it is, compared to New Testament scriptures, uh, it's pretty useless. It's, it's not edifying to the church. Christians are already uh, spending way too much time speculating about prophecy. Prophecy is only relevant when it takes place. Uh, understanding it ahead of time, except for the purpose of recognizing it when it takes place, is a waste of time. Speculating endlessly about this and that and when Christ is going to come and, and creating these elaborate charts. A, a dispensationalism is heavily, heavily weighted uh, toward prophecy and toward Israel. Israel are God's people. The church is just an afterthought under dispensationalism. Plan B, a parenthesis, not God's eternal purpose. And that is a total misunderstanding. In fact, the, 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 the discontinuity between Israel and the church is completely unbiblical. Completely unbiblical. Uh, oh, there's so much ignorance in American Christianity. Uh, including what's taught at seminaries and Bible colleges. Just ignorance, ignorance, no understanding of Scripture. Scripture's right there. If you're born again, you've got the Spirit of God in you. If you want the truth, if you want to understand, if you want to know God, he will lead you. But going to man and man's opinions will lead you into darkness. Systems like dispensationalism or Reformed Covenant theology or Lutheranism or Calvinism, all these man-made systems do not bring the light. You have to go to God because he is light. All right, enough of that. Uh, but yeah, I've got a problem. I don't want to spend six months or more listening to lectures on Daniel. I've read the book many, many times, way too many times. And uh, simplistic answers to Daniel's prophecies are, first of all, if, unless you've read Maccabees, the book, uh, at least the first two books of Maccabees, you're not going to understand some of the uh, large chunks of Daniel that apparently have already been fulfilled. So speculating, all the speculation about that I've heard for 40 years about Russia being Gog and Magog and all this nonsense is ridiculous. As if that's, you know, look at a modern map, and when Ezekiel was written, there were no inhabitants in Moscow. Uh, that was an a, a empty region. The north would have been like Turkey and the Caucasus. Look on a map. I think Christians are, are, are ignorant in geography, too. Because they listen, they would rather listen to a man than go to God. If, why, why does Joel Osteen have the biggest church in the United States? Because he preaches Christ crucified? No. Do you ever hear that from Joel? No. Andy Stanley is a hundred times better than Joel Osteen. I've heard a decent gospel presentation by Andy Stanley. I don't know how often he does it, but I've heard it. And I suspect Andy Stanley is trying to reach people that wouldn't normally be re uh, reached. And as long as he's preaching the gospel uh, in a decent manner, God bless Andy Stanley. And that's, people aren't going to like that either. 
There's enough time picking people apart for, you know, nitpicking, uh, straining at gnats and swallowing camels. Uh, the, the gospel is the essential, and that's why, you know, I, I don't want to listen to Daniel for six months. Especially Sunday morning is supposed to be for worship. Worshiping Christ, worshiping God. What does Daniel have to do with that? Bunch of moralistic stories of what it, what it will be, because that's what Baptists do with the Old Testament. They turn it into a moralistic, therapeutic deism, like so many other churches do. Because what do you do with it? They don't even understand. I don't. Where's the Baptists that understand the difference between the Old Covenant and the New? They don't even talk about the covenants. Reformed Baptists might, but they got so much other baggage that their God is messed up. Immersing Presbyterians. Uh, and I can understand the historical context, why the London Baptist Confession says what it says, because they were a persecuted people. So they compromised. <laughs> There was a first London Baptist confession you never hear about. So the second one was, well, a compromise with the uh, dominant religious forces in England. Pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. Why would they do that? <laughs> to try to get out from some of the pressure they were under. You know, burning at the, being burned at the stake is never a particularly enjoyable experience. Uh, or whatever they were going to do to him. Imprisonment, especially in those days, imprisonment. So here, here's the, uh, the ultimatum that Israel issued sometime yesterday. Uh, um, or today, from a Jewish point of view. 24 hours. I don't know what the starting time was. It was before midnight. All residents of Gaza City may be forced to relocate, according to the UN. The Israeli military has urged, no, commanded, over 100 million people to leave their homes in Gaza City. Gaza City is located in the northern area of the Gaza Strip, which is not a very big area. Uh, it would be like an American county, maybe? Uh... You can look at it on Google Earth. Go take a look. Uh, the UN has, uh, and to urgently move south, south of the uh, the Wadi Gaza, or the Gaza Stream Brook. It's not a river, but there is a waterway, and it divides. Uh, it's a little more than halfway up the Gaza. The Gaza cities in the north, uh, northeast, and the others. They're being told to move to the south. Commanded to move to the south. The UN warned of de devastating consequences. The uh, Israeli Defense Forces issued a, a, the evacuation order, calling it a humanitarian step. Uh -huh. Israel is not interested in being humanitarians right now, in particular. It did not mention any specific deadline uh, with a spokesman acknowledging it would take some time. Now, actually, from what I understand from other sources, they said 24 hours. And the UN said that's impossible because the uh, many of the people there are sheltering in UN schools and hospitals in Gaza City and, you know, just, just trying to get, just like, like a hurricane, what happened in, in some hurricanes uh, like Katrina, where people in nursing homes just couldn't be evacuated, and you had actually people being uh, euthanized because they couldn't get them out. Wow! Wow, that's merciful, isn't it? Ah, uh, yikes! So th this is an impossible thing to do. Uh, the the IDF. Israeli Defense Forces call on all residents of the Gaza City to evacuate their homes, move south for their protection, and settle in the area. Settle, you know, like, are they going to provide tents? Because that's what they'll have to live in, or maybe in industrial buildings and whatever, out in the fields. Uh, south of the Gaza River, 
Yeah, you can find it on uh, uh, Google Earth. It's not really a river. The military said, but it's a you know it's a landmark. You can see it. Uh, the military said in a post on an X, a, oh, aka Twitter, "This evacuation is for your personal safety." Really? Is that what Israel is concerned about? Any any Palestinians' personal safety? I don't think so. We've heard enough from them to know where what the real attitudes are about the Palestinians. Wipe them all out. And we've seen what they've been doing for over a generation. Push them out of the land. And those two states, that's why the settlements in the, uh, the West Bank, to make a two-state solution impossible. Actually, what they'd have to do of a two-state solution, okay, the only reasonable way to do it in that land was, first of all, the Israelis get out of the West Bank. Uh, the, the Palestinians need to abandon Gaza because you can't have a, you need a continuous, you can't have a corridor going across Israel. That's just a recipe for disaster. Uh, so or some area in Israel because... Or you're going to expect, uh, nobody else wants to take them in. Uh, the West Bank used to be part of Jordan prior to the Six-Day War. And uh, uh, the Brits were the original cause of most of this anyway, promising both sides everything. But uh, the Israel has been working for a generation to make it impossible to to uh, give the West Bank back. That's why all the settlements are there, to create facts on the ground. And when Israel has abandoned settlements like it did in Gaza, there was a few there, they literally bulldozed the settlements. Now, a decent people would say, we're going to give you the settlements, lock, stock, and barrel, the houses, everything intact, because we owe you. <laughs> we owe you. Uh, it doesn't make up for taking most of your land. But, you know, you have to, if, if you're going to have peace with somebody, you have to keep their interests in mind, too. A good businessman knows that. If you want to make a deal, you have to understand what the other side wants, too. And come to a compromise that satisfies as much as possible both sides. Otherwise, you don't get a deal. There's no reason for somebody just to surrender everything. It's like this New Testament tells us to not, not look after your own, your, solely your own interests, but also the interests of others. Or as Jesus quotes from the law, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, you got to have their concerns in mind, too. So here, the UN Office of Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the UN is useless. They have absolutely no power at all. And the Department of Safety and Security in Gaza uh, was notified just before uh, midnight local time. Okay, so that would be like six hours, like 6 p.m.-ish in the United States. Sundown the beginning of the Jewish day in the United, uh, in Israel. Uh, actually, uh, midnight uh, here, not there. Excuse me, I'm getting confused. Uh, just before midnight local time in Gaza, the entire population of the uh, Gaza north of uh, Wadi, or, or stream, uh, Gaza, or runoff area, <laughs> should relocate to Southern Gospel within the next 24 hours. UN spokesman uh, Stefani Dejeric said in a statement to multiple uh, uh, media outlets on Friday morning, the IDF vowed to continue to operate significantly in Gaza City in the coming days. Oh, oh talk about an understatement. And urged civilians to distance uh, yourselves from the Hamas terrorists who use you as a human shield. In other words, they want the civilians out of the way so they can really open up on them. 
Not that they've restrained themselves at all up to this point. Uh, what are they going to use? A nuke? Won't work. UN official emphasized that it is impossible for such a movement to take place without devastating humanitarian consequences. This amounts to approximately 1.1 million people. The same order applied to all UN staff and those sheltered in UN facilities, including schools, health centers, and clinics, said the spokesman said. Okay. What is this all about, and what is Israel planning to do? Well, I can only speculate, but they want the civilians out of the way because it's going to make them look really mad if they, bad, uh, make them look really bad if they kill a million-plus civilians. Now, most of the, 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 uh, the terrorists or militants, or whatever you want to call them, uh, that were involved in the attack on Israel, some 1,500, I believe, most of them are dead, or perhaps all of them are dead. Uh, they didn't go out, attack, and then retreat, I don't think. Now, <clears throat> Israel is not fighting a conventional enemy. In Islam, the only sure way to paradise is martyrdom, fighting in the cause of Allah. That is the only sure way to paradise. Otherwise, it's the balance. Good deeds against bad deeds. <clears throat> Which some Christians also believe the same thing. Well, sort of Christians. If you believe that, you're lost. <clears throat> because your uh, bad deeds, it only takes one bad deed. Good deeds never compensate for, for bad deeds. They don't. Never outweigh them. It's not, that's not how God judges. Did you keep my law or not? And the law is a unit. That's the Old Testament way. In the New Testament, do you believe in my son or not? God freely offers eternal life to everyone. And what's the cost? Believe on the Messiah, on his son, Christ. F have faith in him. That's it. That's it. Trust in him. What he's done for the world, for you, on the cross. That is all you have to do to be saved. Call upon the Lord, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call, call upon the name of the Lord. What name is that? The name of Jesus Christ, or whatever is appropriate in your local language. And you shall be saved. Calling upon him in faith, that he will do what he's promised. Okay. <sighs> Why is this happening? Well, I can see several possibilities. Based on what they've been doing, they've been smashing Gaza City with bombs, apparently using bunker busters, too, because what I understand is Hamas has, uh, underneath uh, Gaza City, is basically like an anthill filled with tunnels and bunkers. Uh, um, the United States has similar experience in Vietnam. The, uh, the, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese regulars built entire cities underground in the jungles. And the United States tried carpet bombing but found it quite ineffective or ineffective at destroying those things. They were very elaborate. They had underground hospitals, recreation facilities, the works. And we got our, uh, we lost in the, the war in, in Vietnam. We lost it. People need to admit that. The United States was beaten in Vietnam. We were trying to, uh, we were on the wrong side and supporting a American installed puppet. Just like Ukraine. How about that? Uh, yeah, actually, we had one of the puppets uh, eliminated, too. Uh, John Kennedy approved uh, the uh, a coup to get rid of, uh, I can't remember the particular individual's name, but he was sort of a, a pain in the butt, a, bit, a little bit like Zelensky or whatever his name is over there. Uh, and so Kennedy approved uh, a coup operation, uh, the, the Vietnamese military did it, 
uh, with White House approval. And it's, it's an interesting thing that not too long after that, Kennedy himself was assassinated. As you sow, so shall ye reap. Israel, as you sow, so shall ye reap. You, re you sow violence and hate and murder, you will reap more of the same. That's what's been going on there for a long time, both sides. Cycles of violence and hatred. And Israel did instigate the thing. It's not been reported hardly at all in the West, but on Thursday, they instigated a situation on the Temple Mount on, at El Aska Mosque. Uh, roughly 1,500 settlers and radical religious Zionists under police escort and protection, invaded the Temple Mount, Islamic holy ground. And I would say what they were doing there, again, I have to, to uh, infer this a little bit because this, things aren't reported. They were laying a symbolic claim to it. And what I understand now is beyond, this recently has gone way beyond what I imagined was going on, that uh, the Netanyahu government has essentially been taken over by radicals uh, that insist on creating a pure Jewish Old Testament-style state and rebuilding the temple, which is, you know, I never... Uh, th that will actually divide Judaism radically because modern Judaism is not temple worship. Uh, it's not animal sacrifice. It's not Old Testaments. It's rabbinic Judaism. And you would be destroying, to, to build a temple would be uh, eliminating how many years? 1,900 years of rabbinic Judaism as the sole form of Judaism because it was, it, uh, temple Judaism ended in 70 AD. So this this is this would be you know it throw the whole Jew, Jewish world community into chaos and infighting about uh, the temple to build it not to build it animal sacrifice all this stuff is not a majority Jewish view nor is the legitimacy uh, the, even the legitimacy of Israel um, rabbis. Or, uh, ultra orthodox rabbis, rabbis, at least in the mid 80s, did not recognize Israel as a legitimate Jewish nation because it was established by unbelievers and it was not established by the Messiah. Okay, the, the Messiah is coming. He did establish his kingdom. You just weren't looking for the right thing. And they are cut off and hardened until they receive Christ as their Messiah. He's available now, today. God is not preventing them from coming. They have hardened themselves. When it talks about guard hardening, it's always, okay, it, there was a precursor of that of people self-hardening. So God gives you over to your your sins. Just, okay, you want to go that way? Go ahead. I'll just take, you know, the, the prodigal son, the father let him go into the far country. Okay, that's what you want? Go ahead. But what was also said that he who was dead, see, he was essentially cut himself off from Israel and everything else, the prodigal, going into a foreign land. Left his family, left his people, left God. And he was regarded as, well, Jews today, they convert to Christianity. Their families will usually regard them as dead. Uh, and that's one of the reasons you know, in Jerusalem, in the beginning of the Christian time, is the need for people to support one another was because fam the uh, normal means of support, uh, uh, Christians were cast out of their own families, cast out of the synagogues. The, the, the Jewish people were the original persecutors. Uh, of course, they were the ones that crucified Christ to the, the Jewish authorities, the Pharisees and the temple 
they were and the Herodians that were all united against Christ. Uh, what did he do? Expose their sins. But it was God's purpose that he were to die, was to die for us. It was God's plan. He is the Lamb of God, the, the atoning sacrifice. But he, he died for the sins of the whole world. Every Muslim, every Jew, every, every neo-Nazi, turn to him and be saved. No matter what your sins are, turn to him. Christ's atonement is sufficient for the sins of the entire world. And it's available simply by calling upon him in faith to save you. Okay, and most people could care less. Now, they'll regret that later, but then it will be too late. Like Noah's Ark. They could have listened to Noah, and they didn't. So they're supposed to move into this area in South Gaza. All right, so what's going? What's Israel going to do here? Well, there's about three options. If they're smart, they'll do what the Russians did in Mariupol. Because the, uh, the Azov, the, the neo-Nazi regime, uh, radicals in that group were underground in the steelworks in that industrial city. Uh, and the Russians often built their facilities, the Soviets, dual purpose. So uh, in times of war, they were places of shelter. Um, American schools used to have fallout shelters in the basements. But uh, anyway, they, they, they were built to withstand those shelters' nuclear exchanges. So they were pretty tough nuts to crack. And what did the Russians do? They, they didn't want to, to expend the lives of going in there room by room, door by door, underground to try to clear them out. Again, you had a situation like in Vietnam with the underground uh, tunnel complexes. So what did they do? They basically laid siege to it, cut off water, cut off food, everything they could, and let time bring them out old-fashioned siege. Call upon them to surrender. You know, hunger will take its course and thirst. Uh, it, you have to be pretty radical to ignore that. Now, with, Isla with the Islamic radicals, Hamas, well, to die in battle is a sure ticket to heaven. So there, there's a lot more difficulty there. So, But the smart way to do would try to be to get the civilians out and lay siege to that. Now, I'm sure Hamas has some tunnels that are escape tunnels, too. Um, but where do you escape to? They'd have to have uh, maybe to uh, some to Egypt. Uh, but dying in place, fighting Israel, would not be a terrible idea for them. It would be a fulfillment of their desire. And you can't eliminate Hamas anyway. Uh, Ham eliminating Ham Hamas is like eliminating dandelions. As long as the situation that gave birth to movements like Hamas continues to exist, as long as Israel continues to oppress the Palestinian people and try to drive them out of their own land, because that is their land, it's not Israel's land. God didn't give it to Israel in perpetuity. He dispossessed his people of it because it's his land, and he gave it to allow them temporary use of it conditionally. Search the scriptures and see. And the covenant, the eternal covenant, the eternal promise was to Abraham and his seed, singular. Who is the seed of Abraham? Jesus Christ. Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay, so. And you cannot be reconciled to God except through him. No peace with God except through him. No salvation except through him. The one way is Christ. All right, so the, the, uh, the, the Israel, they can lay siege to it. Might work. Uh, they, they've got their armor units there, uh, but they're, they're going to be useless. Out tanks and... Armor is absolutely useless, especially after they have destroyed Gaza City. You cannot take a tank into a city, period, let alone a city that 
the streets are covered with concrete ruins. What Israel would experience is the same thing the, uh, the Germans experienced at Stalingrad. Those, those shattered buildings make ideal defensive fortifications. You can crawl into that rubble and you can't be dug out. It is really, really tough under those conditions. An intact city is much easier. But you don't take armor into an intact, uh, intact city either. You will be hit from above. And a rocket-propelled grenade from above will go right through the top of a tank. Blow its guts out. Turn their, their internal ammunition into a big flare. And blow them up. I mean, they, that is the weakest part of a tank is the top and the bottom. And soldiers will take out tanks. You, know, you can rocket propel grenade, which are as common as matches in the Middle East. They can take a tank out. You just have to hit the right spot. You don't hit them in their front armor. You hit them in the weak spots. And the city, from a high point of value, you can hit the top of the turret. You can hit the top of the engine compartment. You can hit just about anything. One of the weakest areas in attack. So, uh, you know, that's you just don't take armor into those areas unless you want to kill a lot of your own soldiers, like Ukraine does. They are foolish. Plus, I hear that uh, Hamas has cornet anti-tank missiles. Those are the ones that have been taking out all the tanks in Ukraine. A two-man team with a cornet uh, uh, anti-tank rocket, guided rocket. They'll take out anything. M1A1s or Makarovas or whatever. they just blow a hole right through them. Armor is not... Uh, might be puncture resistant, but it's not puncture proof. So you can't take... Israel would, would find they have entered into a meat grinder. They've entered into the equivalent of Stalingrad. Uh, yes, they'd kill a lot of Hamas, but they would be dying in equal numbers. Israel doesn't like that. So what are the other options? So they can either lay siege and let time take its course, hunger, thirst, or they can, uh, in which case Hamas would probably do bonsai charges and things like that to, to uh, achieve quicker martyrdom, uh, escape tunnels, whatever. You've got a very hard nut, a hard enemy to crack there. Uh, but uh, uh, so you can't, a, a ground invasion is absolutely stupid. Not that Israel isn't stupid enough to try it, but they would get a severely, uh, severely bloodied in such a thing. And Hamas would gain a victory doing that. Uh, it doesn't matter. It'd be just like, you know, Custer's last stand, uh, the Indians won. They didn't win the war, but they uh, certainly achieved a, a victory uh, at uh, Little Bighorn. Uh, this would be a disaster. It would be militarily... You know, it would show that, that Israel is under the judgment of God, which Israel is under the judgment of God. The wrath of... Uh, the people that refuse to believe the gospel, the wrath of God abides on them. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 36, remains on them. As long as they refuse to believe. All you have to do is believe to and call upon Christ. And then you've got God's blessing and eternal life. So uh, that would be incredibly insane. Uh, the other possibility, there's already uh, at least one Jewish lawmaker calling for the use of doomsday weapons, otherwise known as nukes. However, given uh, the underground tunnel labyrinth and the piles of concrete on the surface of Gaza City, I don't think a nuke would be very effective unless it was very large or uh, ground-penetrating, in which case 
Israel would suffer devastating fallout. So Israel, uh, using a nuke is, uh, is, is in your own country. <laughs> yeah, it's self-destructive. Uh, that's a, a mark of insanity at that point. Um, so, and it wouldn't be an effective weapon anyway. We already know that. We know nuclear weapons are not effective against hardened fortifications. They, they just aren't. You have to have, I mean, you have to be really at the center of it. You know, if you're actually at the, the detonation point and it's at ground level or it's sub uh, deeper, yeah, it's going to destroy everything within a, a certain radius. Yeah, I mean, you can put a, a mile wide. Israel's got sufficient thermonuclear weapons of a sufficient size that they could put a crater the size of Gaza City. But they would reap the consequences themselves, too. Plus, internationally, they would be the eternal pariah of the world. And they would uh, possibly, uh, well, everyone else would pile on at that point. They would be an outlaw state and a threat to the entire world. So that's not a viable option either. So what are they going to do? What do you do when you've grabbed a tiger by the tail? What are your options? You can't let go because a tiger will turn and devour you. You've got to hold on. But how long can you hold on? Who is going to wear out sooner? You or the tiger? You've got yourself into a bad state of affairs. And the problem is Israel is indeed a apartheid racist state that has an attitude of superiority as God's so-called chosen people that's even worse than the United States and their idea of being a, a special, whatever they call it. American exceptionalism. Yeah, we're accepted from all the laws everybody else has to, to obey. That's We're accepted from... Uh, treating other people the way we want them to treat us. That's America. Lawless, godless America. Because their God, the God in the United States, is not the God of the Bible. For some people that happen to live in this country, they serve and worship that God. But America as a whole, American leadership, has never been particularly caring about God, the real God, the God of the Bible. And then with the Islam Islamists, hatred of non-Muslims is baked in there, too. Uh, more directed to Jews than to Christians. But even then, uh, both Jews and Christians have a certain status as people of the book, uh, as a pair, uh, compared to like uh, polytheists, which uh, find out what they did in India, uh, the the Mongol, uh, the, uh, the Mongols, Mongols when they invaded Israel or in India, I mean they just uh, just wiped them out to the last person in the cities. Christians don't do those things. Real Christians don't do those things. Real Christians follow Christ, who told us to love our enemies. Only God can give you the ability to do that. And only Christ is the answer to what's going on in the Middle East. The way this world is, he has to come quickly because people are getting very comfortable talking about nuclear weapons. Not just in Israel, either. And we've got vicious warmongers in the United States, in Congress, in the Senate. Uh, and for, and that they, they display their hatred 
for their own personal political advantage. Lindsey Graham and others. Because they know that they'll, they'll rah-rah as long as it serves their political interests. They don't care what it is. They have no morality. They have no relationship with God. They do not subject themselves to Jesus Christ and what he tells us to do. So uh, that's what's going on in Israel today. It's going from bad to worse. And again, it was Israel who provoked this on the Thursday prior to Saturday when this started. They had started that with an Israeli government provocation. In the past, there's been groups of radicals that would try to get up on the Temple Mount. But the Israeli authorities, knowing that it would ignite difficulties, conflicts, tried to keep that in check and didn't allow them normally to do that. Uh, but this time it was with government backing, police backing. The minister of the police, or whatever they call it over there, uh, is one of the radicals himself. Netanyahu has, because of his weakness, has allied himself with the radical right settler and, other, and, and religious Zionist parties in Israel, which are small parties, but because of his weakness, in order to get power, he made, he made deals with the devil. And uh, he is a, a weak leader, just like Biden is a weak leader. And so you've got no one that has a conscience and a, 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 and a willingness or the power to restrain what's happening. Neither there nor in the United States. In the past, the United States has always said, no, you're not going to do this. Eisenhower in 1956 uh, took Israel and England and France to the task and it caught them in their plot. And uh, when they took over this, uh, the Suez Canal and said, no, we will deal with you if you go through with this. You will withdraw. And they had to because the United States said so. Because the United States didn't want a world war. And the Russians have done the same thing, or the Soviets did, that they would put a damper on things. Say, nope, you're not going to do this. So they acted as moderators. We don't have those anymore. Again, there's the world is moving back to a multipolar uh, system against where the United States isn't the, the king of the world anymore, or the king of the hill, whatever you want to say. But the United States is incredibly weak at this moment because we have nothing but weak leaders and radicals in Washington and self-serving interests. Just a toxic stew. And the same thing in Israel. So, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I, I can see no other hope than him. This world is going from bad to worse rapidly. And, you know, we deserve judgment. But God's purpose is to save people. Jesus Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. You know, like, what's that? John 3, 17? Say, you shouldn't quote just one verse. Never enough. But that's where we are today. Things are getting hot out there. There's one place to look in times like that, and that's up. God. He is the only answer. He is our protection. He is our fortress. Blessed be the man who trusts in the Lord 
whose trust is the Lord. Cursed is a man who trusts in man, who makes flesh natural abilities, his own strength, his arm. 